After nearly a decade of rumors, the Raptors are once again linked to Andrew Wiggins, who's a guy that seems like a possible trade candidate for the Golden State Warriors this offseason. But rather than speculate in another video, we brought an actual expert on the Golden State Warriors. And Randy, welcome to Raptors Digest. We're going to break down the, the sort of linking of Andrew Wiggins once again to the Toronto Raptors, whether or not he'd be a fit, and potential packages we could offer to the Golden State Warriors to see if we could get a deal done. But folks, before we dive into that, over 51% of our viewers are not subscribed to the channel, and we got some wild stuff happening this offseason for the Toronto Raptors, so make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. But Randy, welcome to the channel, and uh, excited to chop up some Andrew Wiggins talk with you, sir. Long-time viewer, first-time joiner, happy <laughs> to be here and talk some basketball in the offseason, baby. For sure. Well, as, as is the case for Toronto Raptors side of things, it's the time of year where the Andrew Wiggins rumors start ramping up once again. Basically, we have an article once again linking the, the Andrew Wiggins to the Toronto Raptors, along with the Chicago Bulls, Atlanta Hawks, as other potential candidates. And again, it seems like there's been years of potential deals that could have went through and stuff, but this seems like a legitimate season where Andrew Wiggins could actually be dealt away from Golden State. Obviously, Wiggins is uh, one of the team's trade chips, given his current contract and the potential return that they could get back for him. But the case for trading Andrew Wiggins is he's played poorly enough for his contract, or the trade against Andrew Wiggins is he's played bad enough his contract could be perceived as having negative value in the Warriors, need to attach one of their young players or pick to to move on from him so randy i see that little snippet you know coming from some analysis and i say okay andrew wiggins a canadian the raptors are loading up stockpiling some canadians on the roster here right now we could maybe sneak in and buy low on an andrew wiggins so before we talk about any potential packages and what this article is throwing out there What's the temperature on Andrew Wiggins right now for the Golden State Warriors fans? And, you know, is it likely he's going to get dealt this offseason? I think people are not happy with Wiggins. He had a terrible season to his standards. When he won the championship with us, he was the best defensive player in the NBA, especially in the playoffs. He shut down Tatum, and he was making those mid-range jumpers and the pick and pop three in the corner. Did none of that this year. He even got benched where Kaminga came in and started. Yeah. Looking at his contract, he's owed $26 million next year, $28 million. Oh, you have it right there. Great. $20 million the following year before he becomes even an unrestricted free agent or a restricted free agent. So whoever gets him will have a lot of player control. He's still only 29 years old. One more time. 29 years old. It feels like he's been with us for so long since he was a number one draft pick when he was what, like 19? <laughs> he's only just hitting his prime. So I think there's a lot of tread on the tires, fair enough, but there's still stuff in there in the right place for him to be successful. Yeah. And then lastly, I'll, I'll turn it back to you. Warriors just need to get rid of salary. Mm -hmm. It was proven this year where we need to get bigger and we're a little bit older than we need to be to compete with the Denvers of the world, the Clippers of the world. Yeah. So we need to get a little bit younger and taller to be successful. And Wiggins may be casually of that because of his contract to trade away. Yeah, well, the potential of Andrew Wiggins, it feels like I've been screaming. I'm always a homer for our Canadian guys, so I've been screaming about <laughs> Wiggins' potential for, again, probably since I was a young child. But Wiggins, as you sort of mentioned, 29 years old, 13 points, 5 rebounds, 1 assist. You know, the 3-point shooting, still not even horrific, you know, at 36% oh. this season. But uh, per game, obviously took a step down this season, especially from... You know, where he was at when you guys won that NBA championship where Wiggs was arguably your second best player, but the advanced shooting numbers really don't like him. You know, corner threes for a guy that's out there on the wing, only hitting 35% of those. Again, it might look sound okay, but a lot of the salt wing shooters are generally, at least from the corners, hitting about 46%, making more of those shots. He's taking some mid-range heavy jumpers, but basically Wiggs is a guy that it has just had a roller coaster of a career and the warriors oh, as you know <laughs> that's that's an understatement but the warriors want to get under that luxury tax but so how could a deal potentially go through well wigs we took a look at his contract and this article basically proposes a potential sort of outlet a potential deal for the for the raptors linking chris boucher to you guys so boucher is on an expiring contract 11 million dollars per next season and there was some potential for him to become a nice stretch big but he's somewhat of a disappointment for the toronto raptors his shot hasn't really come around i think that's a pretty surface level analysis on chris boucher this man is a hustler he's an energy guy he plays defense you know 
jump shot definitely is a bit inconsistent, but I think this season his value is really nerfed and tanked by just not really being consistently in the rotation. And then when he did get back into the mix after the Raptors traded away most of their top guys, was a, a dude that ended the season pretty injured, but obviously isn't a player that's going to, you know, get Warriors fans absolutely amped up. The reason a deal centered around Chris Boucher could potentially happen, you know, sending back your former champ, Chris Boucher, you know, to Golden State would be to clear salary. And the Raptors could attach a Bruce Brown sort of option. You know, maybe at this year's NBA draft, Bruce Brown, Chris Boucher, where you guys could potentially not pick up that option on Bruce Brown, let him walk. So there's an easy way to clear out about $20 million. And then you have an expiring in Boucher and you just open up that salary and then for our troubles, you know, giving you that salary cap, you guys attach a little first in there for the Toronto Raptors. You know, if I came to you, if Masai Ujiri went to the Warriors fan base and said, Boucher, Bruce Brown, and a first to Golden State, you guys taking that? You guys getting amped up about that? Or are you uh, looking for, for better offers? Well, here's the beauty about Chris. And let me ask you this question, Ben. Who's the tallest player on the Raptors? <sighs> Coloco was at this Kelly Olynyk. Me, I couldn't. I don't even know at this point. We had, so, <laughs> we had Malik Williams, I think, there for the last five games of the season. So Chris is six nine. He instantly becomes the tallest player in the Warriors. The tallest player is only six <laughs> nine, and that's the biggest issue that Steve Kerr talked about coming this off season is we need to get taller. Mm -hmm. We get destroyed on the rebounding. Our guards are good rebounding, but inside Looney Draymond. Looney 6'7, 6'8, Draymond 6'6. Six, six. We need help. Yep. So, him, even though he's a wing player, almost could be our de facto center. Which, again, does that actually help the Warriors? Because we need beef to go against Jokic, against Gobert. But I do like what you said, though, of shedding the salary, because that really helps us when you need to resign Clay potentially mm -hmm. and a team friendly deal. And Chris Paul is a uh, team owned free agent, $30 million. We either pick up or let go. Mm -hmm. So, maybe he could be a trade pawn as well to get rid of the salary. But whatever we can do to get under the tax threshold, which is $170 million, Joe Lacob doesn't want to pay that tax threshold yep. if we're not in the playoffs. This year, we didn't make the playoffs. So there's a, a lack of the term. There's a rule out there. If you're not winning, you're not paying. And right now, they're trying not to pay. Yeah, that's a uh, Raptors been in a little bit of a similar boat, you know, with different salary shedding. Obviously, Delta Way, Pascal, Siakam, OG, and Anobi. So you saying yes to a Boucher, Bruce Brown, and uh, and uh, for Andrew Wiggins and a first? Is that is that an agreed upon deal for Warriors fans? I don't know about a first. I would say maybe a second, or it would be a protected for or a protected first. Say like I'm looking right now. The Warriors have their own first in 2028, 2029. I would say protected first, maybe top 15, top 20, in case the Warriors really don't do well. Tank, we still get it. And then it becomes unprotected, say, 2029, 20, 2030. Okay. As long as, as long as I see first in there. As long as I see <laughs> first in there. You know, that's that's a couple of years. That's a dangerous couple. That's three seasons of Andrew Wiggins at consistent money. Couldn't mess up flexibility and stuff like that. I want, I want a little top 10 protection on that. Or, or you know, give a crazy protection and unprotect the following year. That's, uh, that's what I'd be looking for. But, again... If this trade were to go down, because it's been speculated upon for years and years and years, and Raptors fans just would kind of want to know, what's the experience with Andrew Wiggins if you had to sum it up in 20 seconds? Could he be good? Could he be valued? You know, get the salesman out of it in these trade negotiations yep. hypotheticals. Could he be a good fit on a team that's built around a Scotty Barnes, RJ Barrett? Not the most elite shooters, but have improved in that area. You know, a few Canadian guys. Would it make sense of this team to go after him? Or is he just, uh, you know, a, a Canadian to be happy or have on your roster while your team's kind of bad? <laughs> Uh, 20 seconds off the court he'd be a great mentor to young players really be a good fit he's never had any issues with the Warriors only high regards in him off the court and on the court great defender down this year but I think a new change of scenery will help him mm -hmm. and he'll be able to hit those mid-range and let those players do the job like he let Steph Clay Draymond do the job he will let them develop while doing his part so I think he can be a good fit okay okay Bring in old legs. It's finally going to happen. After those 13-year-old hoop mixtapes, that young Canadian we were watching when I was like eight years old, it's going to come true. Wigs, RJ Barrett, 
going to lead this team to a championship. Maybe not. We'll see. But folks, you guys are the best to make it this far. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. And uh, check out Warriors Digest if you guys are looking for uh, some little Steph Curry, some Gold State Warriors sure. updates. I know it's going to be a... Both of these teams, I think, will be crazy teams to follow during the offseason. But mm -hmm. any last words, Randy? A potential trade package with the Toronto Raptors? Who would have thunk that when we both earned the championships four years later, here we are talking about potential Wiggins to the Raptors. So <laughs> that's the life in the NBA for you. <laughs> that's tough. Anyways, <laughs> cheers.